to get that grass green and the chartreuse to blend together good, you have to kind of press hard. That looks really pretty. Okay, so let's go on now to, how long have we been on here for? Okay, good, 33 minutes. I try to keep my videos to at least an hour. Sometimes I go an hour, 15 minutes, hour and a half, but I try not to go over that. Cause I'm sure some people are like, girl, we don't listen to you that long. <laughs> So purple, green, purple. Ooh, I'm gonna end up with two purples in a row. Mm, oh, I see, Purp uh, green, purple, green, purple, which will be fine. You know why? Because it's only a little a little part, so we're good. Have no choice anyway. Okay. This is that little bit of that indigo blue just adds a little bit more depth. On this one, I need to be a little more careful because I have a lot of color to get in on both sides. So I don't have to go down that far. Um, what are we doing next? Next is the orchid. You can tell it's one of my favorite colors. Look at the pencil. <laughs> Thank God they sell them at Hobby Lobby. So you just go there and buy your colors to replace them. Because I'll be replacing that. I'll be replacing that pretty soon. Oh, actually, I don't have to replace that pretty soon. I have... Um, I have a whole nother set of colored pencils that I bought at Sam's Club. It's a set of 40, I have a, it's a set of 40 uh, pencils. Um, I think it's 40. What is it? Something like that. But anyway, it's at Sam's Club and it's only $20, you guys. It's excellent. So I bought that as replacements for when I need replacements. I don't have to go get, get any. Okay. Um, Mulberry. So I barely have enough room right here. And then let's put in the orange. Okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to erase here. Just to cut back some of the just cut back some of this mulberry color. Okay, when your leaf isn't very big, I think that that's just too many colors. So you might just want to skip the orchid and go right into the mulberry. Okay, because there's just not enough room for all that. Now on a really long one, there's enough room. But um, on a, on a longer leaf but when it's not I would cut it down to three take out the orchid and just deal and just go with these three so that's what I would do but the bigger leaves you can go with the four with with all four colors okay So pretty when the um when I think it's the mulberry mulberry mixes with this orange yellow this orangey yellow it um, makes makes a real like a deeper orange like another shade of orange it's really pretty okay So today we're going to do the leaf in this video. 
and then um, the next video we will will attack these flowers. I have a really pretty technique for these flowers that I did in this one of my other girls that I really like the flowers colors. So I'm going to do that there, and then we'll attack the. Listen to me, attack. Uh, we'll do the face. Or should I do that and then do hair? <sighs> I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Because I want to do the... Um, I want to see her. I want to do her face. I'm excited about that. So we'll do the flowers and her face. And then the next video, we'll do the hair and the outfit. And I love her outfit because her outfit is, um, see her outfit here? It's almost like a toga on the bottom. So I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> it's like she just tied a sheet around herself. I just thought that was like very nature looking, very nature inspired. No fancy clothes, just a sheet tied around like toga. And I also put like a tattoo of leaves on her neck to add some funkiness. I like that. Just add a little bit more of this yellow in here. Just keep things brightened up, and then we'll do a little white Just to brighten things up a little bit more, even and more blending. I want it to look like the sun's hitting it. Very pretty. Um, I see a little extra blending needs to happen right here. blending all right that's as good as that's gonna get okay pretty all right so then let's go back to the green and we'll start with um, the deep green is that what I'm doing no yeah dark green I keep saying deep green it's dark green I love looking at all the different fall color uh, leaves. Oh, so gorgeous. And then when I was Googling that, and then I was saving a bunch of, and I was taking a bunch of pictures from my phone of all the leaves so I could have them sitting by me. And then, um, then I ran into all these beautiful skies that went with the leaves. Oh my goodness. So this girl is gonna go into one of my mixed media collage piece backgrounds. And the sky is gonna be one of those skies that I took, um, uh, that I snapped pictures up on Google. Oh my God, so many beautiful skies. So little time. <laughs> so I'll create a background for her on this as a coloring sheet. And then, um, and then, um, and then uh, I'll do a background, the collage mixed media background, like I did for my last girl. We 
need a little bit more of this grass green. Okay, now we can go in with this. Okay, make sure I'm in frame. Okay, now you guys, I turn my picture every which way but loose, but it's so much easier. I try not to, but then I'm not going to be at the right angle. It's going to be too hard. Actually, you know what, let me just, I like that blending, but I want to leave a little bit more of the yellow, so let's just erase. If you go too far, you can just erase a little bit, and when you erase, it actually also blends. So when you erase, it erases, but first it smears it a little bit, which is which is awesome. Okay, make sure. Frame. I got a little of that green. Don't want to do that. Got a little of that green in that flower. Which actually really wouldn't matter. If colors get on, if like if a little green gets into the flower and it shows up, that could be cool. It's kind of like the colors bouncing off onto each other. Like when I paint this girl, when I do this girl, I'm going to, um, I'm going to have like some, um, for her shading, it's going to have purple. Some of the purple is going to come out onto her skin. Um, when I shade in here, I'm going to put purple and all kinds of cool colors to shade in her color. So the colors are going to bounce off of, off of her headpiece onto her. So. I think that looks cool. Don't you? I'm going to throw a little bit more of this chartreuse right in here. And some white. Okay. That looks pretty. All right, we're down to our last leaf. And the last one will be purple. And you guys, we have enough time. I think I'm going to do this flower, and I'll do th these other two off camera. But we'll do that. We'll do that flower. Um, because I have an hour. Like I said, I like to be on like an hour, so we're good. All right, I'm going to put the violet in first. Then I'll go back and put the blue in, the indigo. Because really on the indigo, I've been kind of putting too much. I only want to just deepen just the deepest little corners with the indigo. I don't need to put a lot of that indigo color in. I just want to deepen right in the crux of when it, the leaf ends and then where it begins. That's it. That's all I really want, and I've been putting too much in. Okay, I've been doing too much. And then this leaf is small, so I'm gonna skip the orchid and go right into the mulberry. Okay. Remember I told you guys on the ones that are smaller, I'm gonna skip that. And then we'll go in with the orange. The orange yellow. See that fit a lot better than trying to put all those in a small leaf. And then we'll leave a little white in the middle. Perfect. 
and then um, I just need to go over with the mulberry a little bit more. Deepen that mulberry up a little bit more. Okay. All right, let's blend everything. Nothing like a small leaf. And make sure like you clean your pen, your blender off because you might have something left over. Like there was a bunch of green on here. So clean that off. That looks good. Let's put on the other side. Make sure I'm in frame. Yep. I love when the magenta hits that yellow orange, it makes a deeper orange. And then it goes into a lighter. It's really cool. And that wasn't even planned when I when I put these colors together. It was like a happy little surprise. And then let's lighten that up here. Nothing better than happy little surprises in your art. <laughs> Sometimes you get a surprise and you're like, Ugh, I didn't want that surprise. <laughs> Look how pretty that is. Oh, I love those colors. I love those fall leaves. Like I said, I looked up a bunch of leaves on Google and then I took pictures of them and I was like, uh, obsessed. Okay. So let me put my pencils. You guys, this is how I, I do my pencils. I rubber band all my greens together. So I have Jane Davenport colors and I have Prismacolor pencils and I put them all together. I also have another set and it's um, Spectrum Noir pencils. I'm gonna be adding that to this too. I don't really care. I mean, I love Prismacolors. I love Jane Davenport's and I'm sure I'll love these Spectrum Noirs. But the main thing is that um, I get the color that I want so you know I'll mix all three brands together so and doing it like that then you, you just and I keep them in a in a big bag like this and then I'm able to just and then they're also when you do it like that then they're portable so you can just take your bag of pencils with you all the time so love that okay so this is something else I do I make sure that I write down the colors that I use in this book. Isn't this book cute? Always be yourself unless you can be a unicorn. Then always be a unicorn. So cute. This is from Dollar Tree. Look at the stuff Dollar Tree has, you guys. If you don't watch my haul videos, you need to because that was in a haul video. Is that fabulous or what? Obsessed. Okay. So, um, this is what I want to, I think is what I used for the, yeah, for these flowers. Indigo blue, processed red, layer over, blend out and then I use the ginger root so let me get these colors out so I have indigo which is right here perfect and I wrote down what I just did I wrote down the colors of those of the the colors that we just did today right here violet orchid mulberry yellow orange and orange but you know what I didn't write down I didn't write my down my combination for those leaves so I need to do that let me pull those back out just a second I think that they're th these three right here. Let me see. Dark green, grass green, and this. Yeah, I'm gonna pull that out so I can make sure I write that in my book here. Because you you think you'll remember the colors, you won't. Okay, process red. 
think that's over. Where is it? Is it over here? Is this process red? Yep. Process red right here. Um, indigo, process red, and ginger root. Okay, and I keep my whites and my ginger root. I just keep these out and beige and these colors here for skin tones. I just keep these all penciled up like this because I use them so much and I keep them in my little pile I have. I would have a little pile sitting over here and you guys can't see it. And um, of all the stuff I use all the time, like my white Posca pen and just everything, my ink pens, I just leave a little pile over here and I can throw it in a cigar box. I don't always throw it in a cigar box. A lot of times I just leave the stuff in a little pile up here on the side because I use it so much anyway. Okay, what I need to do is have an open container instead of a cigar box. I have to open the cigar box. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get myself a little container where I can contain everything in the container. I don't have to get one. I have plenty at my house. Plenty of containers. I just need to go get one. Okay, stop jibber-jabbing. All right, let me think of what I'm doing. Okay, got it. All right, so we're going to do this flower right here in the middle and we're going to start out with indigo blue light medium pressure more on the lighter side because you're going to put You're still trying to lay down a lot of color, but you want to put this process red right on top of it. And you want them to be able to blend together. So, if you put down too much color, and then you want to bring out the process red. If you, um, if you make it too heavy, you won't be able to blend the two colors together. don't want to do that. Now, do ya? <laughs> You're like, okay, Angela, calm down. Okay, and then we want to do the tip of the flower with the, what is this? Ginger root. This is also another color. If you're doing like a lighter skin tones, this is another good blending color. I use peach a lot when I use the darker skin tones to do a lot of blending, but this is good for uh, the lighter skin tones a lot of times for blending. Okay, so we want to take our blender, make sure there's nothing on the pencil, like green or something. So I cleaned off my blender, and let's blend out. So pretty. Okay, and then let's blend that process right out and blend that right into that, God, I wish to get the name of that color, ginger root. Blend right into the ginger root. So the ginger root now is going to be a little bit of like a... pinky color. That looks really pretty. Gorgeous. All right, next one. There we go. I need to bring that up a little bit more and have less of a, you just want that on the very tippy edge. And I kind of had too much going on there. I didn't bring it up high enough. There we go. That looks really pretty. Okay. 
Continuing on. So I won't do the two small flowers on the sides, this one and that one, but um, I won't do those two flowers, but um, do I want to put that? No, I don't. But I'll do them off camera so that we'll be all set to do the face and the skin and maybe start the hair. I'll start the hair off 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 camera too. So some of that, like half the hair will be done so we can just do half the hair. Cause it's the same thing over and over and over and over. And I you know, sometimes I think it can get boring cause you're like, okay, we already saw you doing hair for like the last 30 minutes, so. But I have to say the process of doing things over and over and over like the same thing is like really meditative. I like it. I'm, I'm a knitter too, and I like that process of doing the same thing over and over and over. Ooh. I think it's very meditative. Okay, just used our ginger root. For some reason, I want to call this color paper white because uh, Tim Holtz has a Tim Holtz stain called paper white, and that's what I want to name this. I don't know why. Look how pretty that turns out. Um, mixing the, taking the indigo blue and over it putting the um, processed red. Look at the pretty purple that it makes. Really, really pretty. Okay, so we're going to keep doing the same process over and over. Just making sure you guys can see me still. I learned my lesson the other day. <laughs> Check your damn camera because it might just turn off on you and you're talking to nobody. That's what happened to me the other day. I think that was yesterday. No, the day before. I was like, what? In fact, I think my camera was full. So. My camera had a moment. Now, there's a little bit of green in here, which is cool. It kind of looks like the green is bouncing off onto this flower. So, that's cool. So don't get all upset when things do blend together or you get some green into your yellow or whatever. It looks like um, the sun did it. Those are happy little accidents. Like Bob Ross said, happy little accidents. Oh, I need to... I mean, how much more can I sharpen that nub? <laughs> Not much. That nub is like ridiculous. Okay, then go over it with the process red. Make that beautiful purple color. And come out with the process red. Um, this is one of my, cause it started being one of my favorite colors. I don't even know why they call this process red. This color is nothing like red. This color is the most beautiful magenta ever. It is not even red. So I don't know what the hell they're talking about. I was ignoring that color because I think I saw red on it. It was and I because it said red, I put it with my reds, and I don't use red very often, as you guys will see. So it was in hiding in my pro in my reds. And then I seen a girl use process red one day and I said that color is everything. 
I don't even know why they call it processed red. There's nothing red about that. Well, there's red in it, but it's a magenta. They should call it magenta because that is what that is. It is not red. It's not even a processed red. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Anyway, listen to me getting all upset about some color. Calm down, Angela. Calm down. Gorgeous. Isn't that gorgeous? Those three colors. I saw a girl, um, I can't think of who did it. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember where I learned it from, but I saw her using, I don't know the exact, do I know the exact color she used? I think these are the exact colors, except for when it came to this color here, the lightest color, she used something else because I didn't have that. So I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I think ginger root will look good. So so actually, it even turns out a little bit different because I use that ginger root, so mine comes out a little bit different. But that's the cool thing about it—you don't have, you know, you may not have all the same colors that I, ha I have right here, but you can um, use what you have and come out with something close, and then it kind of even is a little bit different, you know. So you find a color combination or an idea, then you put your own twist on it, and you make something cool too that's a little bit different making it your own okay a little ginger root and blending Make sure you blend into that processed red a little bit with the purple. First, just sit here and blend the, the processed red and the indigo together. Then blend that in to the processed red. Then blend your processed red and blend it just a little bit up into the ginger root. Just up into it a little bit, not completely. You still want that little bit of that ginger root on the end for your highlight. For your highlight. Oh my God, this is turning out so pretty. I love the colors. I was at.